This is my Silverado ZR2. 2022 is the second truck I bought brand new off the lot. And this one I had to purchase in Oregon of all places because last year these were a little difficult to get a hold of. Now I'm sure some of you are long followers on this channel and know the backstory of this truck and all its ins and outs, corks, pluses, minuses, costs, essentially everything because I told you everything about this truck. But for the newcomers who are coming to the channel, I have a bit of a rap sheet to tell you about my Silverado ZR2 in my first year of ownership. We're down here in the woods right now because it's like 90 degrees out in April, the beginning of April. So just trying to shield myself from the sun because it takes a while to film videos. And also, I'm sorry, I'm not Doug DeMiro, but uh, I don't have an external mic. This? So you guys are literally hearing me through my phone. So am I talking loud enough? Hopefully I am. Anyway, I like to get the bad out of the way first whenever we do these types of videos. So the bad whenever it comes to the Silverado ZR2 and what to expect. Well, for one, and a common known one, is gas mileage. You're gonna pay the price for that big 6.2 liter engine. I've towed with this thing a couple times, and whenever that's a factor, obviously your gas mileage is gonna dip, and I get around seven to eight miles per gallon. Regularly, though, I think I get somewhere between 17, 18 miles per gallon on a great day. Uh, that's about the highest I've ever gotten. My average, though, throughout my lifetime of owning it has been 11 to 12. So yeah, not that great. Another one of the big issues I have is that it doesn't come factory with rock sliders. So if you're looking to purchase one and you see it as a dealer add-on, definitely jump for it. That is a huge upgrade that will save you money in the long run, even though it's an expensive upfront modification. This truck has suffered severe rock chips all along the skirting doors and back to the beginning of the bed. And this is due to the fact that I just don't have coverage there. Rock sliders might not even be enough to save it, but it would at least minimize the damage because I've also had issues on bottoming out on my pinch well because well this truck's meant to off-road so we off-road it. Dang they should really have a rock slider on that. And this is even on where the paint is textured a little bit almost like a bed liner underneath the initial paint. It's laid on super thick to prevent chips and dings from eating the entire way through to the primer or bare metal. And with this truck it just wasn't good enough. There were a lot of dings and dents, lots of chips. To be honest, thousands of dollars in paint damage. These happen to be aftermarket 35 inch tires, which frankly, the ZR2 needs every bit of that. 33 just isn't gonna cut it. Now, unfortunately, if 33s, the factory 33 inch tires don't fit. And I can say that honestly from ownership, they just don't fit, they rub. The 33 inch tires that come from the factory even rub the carpet inserts. I didn't have to do any cutting, but I definitely had to subtract a lot of the noise canceling equipment that they put underneath here. So this truck should easily be able to fit 35, even 37 inch tires from the factory. If this is supposed to be a direct competitor for the Raptor or TRX, why not do it? That's such an easy thing to ask. We're not asking for a supercharger just yet. I only have one more complaint and it's a big one. Reliability. I've had issues from day one. The moment I drove it off the lot, the transmission seemed like it was slipping or some people claimed it was a lifter issue. I didn't know. GM's a little finicky with warranties whenever you do modifications, which we'll get to those a little bit later in the video. But the transmission in this machine essentially went out. I have 9,000 miles on it. It was suffering since zero. And for Chevy to attempt to not cover that, it's just a, a big swing and a miss from such a big company with loyal followers. So now for the most part, the bad is out of the way. So let's get to the good. To prove that this truck has been tried and tested, I've taken to Roush off Road Park here near Tower City, Pennsylvania, and we also shipped it out to Colorado, where it proved itself on three trails, Jeep only trails, mind you. I don't know what the rating system out is out in Colorado, uh, but just to show you how intense these trails are, they were up there with Roush Creek. With, for those who don't know, Roush Creek is an off-road dedicated park uh, for you to take your vehicles out to with varying degrees of difficulty. And this vehicle went out there, proved itself, but unfortunately got a little bit of damage. Like I mentioned, the pinch weld, paint chips, dents. And frankly, I can't imagine how severe the damage would have been without these upgraded 35 inch tires, just to give us that little bit of an edge on ground clearance. Now these do come with a factory two inch lift, but not being able to fit those tires is just such a huge blow to its off-roading capabilities. Would I pick this truck over the other two competitors, the Raptor or the TRX? This truck's actually faster than a Gen 3 Raptor. I street raised one that had 37 inch tires. This one has 35s and it walked it convincingly. Now everyone blames the tires to be the issue there, but it wouldn't have mattered. This vehicle, is faster. That 6.2 liter engine does the talking. Ram TRX, that's a different story. My experience owning this vehicle tends to be a little unique because I also owned a Colorado ZR2. I still do actually, it's my giveaway vehicle. And I daily that about the same amount of time that I daily this. And this might be a question you're asking yourself, do you want a Colorado ZR2 or the Silverado ZR2? For the price, the extreme capability, better performance, better gas mileage, it's a no-brainer in my book. I would pick the Colorado ZR2. Now, yes, you're giving up that beefy V8, towing capacity, bed size. It's not enough. I, I, I overlook that whenever it comes to the Colorado ZR2. It's too perfect in my book. I will pick that every day of the week, and that's why I'm actually trading this vehicle in on a Colorado ZR2 
very shortly. I have a, a full build video on that if you guys want to check that out. It's up in the top if you guys want to watch that, me uh, custom building that down there with Matt Beaver at Whitmore. Modifications done on this vehicle, very, very few. We had a wide body kit that was gifted to us, uh, didn't really like the look, and whenever we found out that we couldn't supercharge it, uh, there were some issues behind the scenes with that. And that really killed our morale on the build for this vehicle. So the wide body kit, we were going to do the entire way around. We just had the front though. Then we were going to supercharge it. That was almost locked in, everything ready to go. Uh, and just totally fell apart. So we're jumping ship, getting the Colorado ZR2. But mods are starting to be available for this thing. We also wanted to lift it. Ready Lift has been advertising a lift and saying it was going to be ready. It's going to be ready for, I think it's been eight, nine months now at this point. And it's still not here. So no hate towards Ready Lift. They're trying to perfect their product. But man, we needed that a long time ago so that I could fit these 35 inch tires comfortably. I added these goofy little rock slider steps here. I mean, they're just steps, they're not rock sliders. I wanted to make them into makeshift rock sliders just because I was so desperate. But other than that, oh, we have the AWE off road exhaust. Uh, that's probably my favorite modification on the vehicle by far. Listen to this. Definitely sounds better than the Raptor, and it's debatable if it sounds better than the TRX. I happen to think it does, just has that throaty 6.2 liter Chevy V8. Something I like about it though, is the interior. Chevy killed it on the Silverado ZR2 interior. I think it's one of the best in the game. I do like the Ram TRX's big panel in the middle, almost looks like a Tesla, it's been said before. This one just fits Chevy's theme a little bit better, and they have the black on black. A lot of piano finish like I wish they did on the Colorado ZR2. Yellow stitching in the seats, black logos, all around. 9 out of 10 interior. Very little room for improvement. As I'm editing this video, it just comes across like I'm complaining a little bit too much. Yes, this truck has its shortcomings, but just like the Colorado ZR2, I'm sort of overlooking the fact that that vehicle, my Colorado ZR2, has some pretty significant modifications. So if you are watching this video looking to buy a Silverado ZR2, or you know that you are, and you're watching this just to get hyped up about it, I apologize for the beginning of this seeming a little bit well, I don't know, one-sided in, in negativity. And here's the answer to all your prayers. This truck's lift kit will be coming out very, very soon by Ready Lift, and I'm sure many others. BDS, Cognito, all of them, I'm sure, have lift kits in development for this truck. And once that's taken care of, that cures your ground clearance issue, your tire clearance issue, doesn't really help your reliability in any way, but that fixes two of my major complaints with this truck. So once those are out and once those modifications are put on your truck that you buy, I gotta be honest with you, I think this is the best full-size truck on the market. The only thing that might beat it out is a uh, Jeep Gladiator, but I honestly think it would do better than a Raptor or definitely a TRX. Don't let my negativity get you down too much. This is a very powerful and competitive off-road truck. Aside from that, boys, that's it. You guys have to develop your own opinion on this truck. It does look extremely good. I honestly love the grill, love the placement and look of the flow tie. The ZR2, I honestly think, was a great name. I, I've said before, I was like, man, they should have named it something else, something a little different to go in line with a TRX or a Raptor. But Chevy doesn't need to follow. Chevy's been using the ZR2 name for a long time, and why not slap it on their current premier off-road full-size truck? So again, this truck has great looks, great interior, a ton of potential whenever it comes to off-roading. Just need a few mods to get you over the hump. It comes in this beautiful glacier blue. I also love the sand dune metallic that it comes in. So I hope the beginning of the video didn't get you down too much. This is a very cool truck. So if you guys are thinking about buying one, I wouldn't say I highly recommend it, but if you have time and money to add those few modifications, I would stick with this over the Trail Boss, Rebel, Ford Tremor, Toyota Tundra, Nissan Frontier, and Titan. It's by far better than all of those. I'm holding this truck to a super high standard, so that's why I'm a little bit critical. But thank you guys so much for watching. That is my review of the Silverado ZR2 one-year review. And they have a couple different versions coming out, the ZR2 Bison and uh, another one that was just announced and making a video about that, which if you're a ZR2 fanboys, you're going to be very pleasantly surprised with that news. Likes are always appreciated. This video is going to do horrible at the beginning, so if you are a longtime fan or just a new viewer, uh, it helps out so much to just spread the word and help me out. I know you don't even know me, but uh, it means the world. So thank you so much for that. Follow me on Instagram, rfracing717. Check out my giveaways like we were mentioned earlier in the video. Those are the first links down in the description. That's the best way to support the channel uh, is buying my merchandise and entering those giveaways. So thank you guys for that. And if you made it this far in the video, say ZR2 down in the comments for what a badass truck it is. And I'm very excited for what the future brings with the Silverado. See you guys next time.